Well, it probably came as no surprise to many people that the Acolyte Season 2 was not going to be happening. But for those that were fans of the show, they started lashing out, blaming other members of the so-called toxic Star Wars fan base, claiming that they got the show canceled and they never gave it a chance, and that review bombing is what utterly did this show in. Well... There's some actually good reasons as to why this show was canceled, which I was surprised to find an article here by Forbes that outlines this. So we're going to talk about it. So hi, I'm Jared with Capture the Magic. And the article here from Forbes, I feel it's a pretty funny headline. The very obvious reason Disney canceled the Acolyte. It wasn't toxic dude bros. Agreed. So they're going to say there has been much gnashing of teeth and rending of garments over the past week over the cancellation of the Acolyte by Disney. The Star Wars series will not live beyond its first season, and it's unclear whether any of the characters or storylines set up in season one will be carried on anywhere else. I certainly hope not, but knowing Lucasfilm, they probably will. I do think that the Stranger was a good character. I disagree, and I'd be happy to see him again in some other capacity. Darth Plagueis was spotted toward the end of the season, and I'd certainly like to see more of him. Oh, boy. But the show itself was not a hit largely because it was poorly written, completely agree, riddled with plot holes, and very uneven acting from its various leads and looked cheap despite its enormous cost. Completely agree. And while some outlets want to paint the cancellation as a win for, quote, toxic dude bros in the fandom, as if no women could possibly have disliked the acolyte, exactly, and others are saying that its failure will cause Disney to avoid trying new things. I think the real culprit is twofold. The show was far too expensive and did not draw big enough numbers to justify the cost. That was probably the main reason. And the show was far too expensive and did not receive enough critical acclaim and widespread fan support. Also, this whole idea where they said, you know, this is going to make Disney not want to try new things. Trying new things with bad writing, if your lesson out of that is, oh, we shouldn't try new things, what you should instead do is focus on good writing and good storytelling and then apply that to new things. And you'll probably have a much better success rate. But when you apply bad writing to bad acting with bad storytelling with something new, you can see where this ends up going. Both of these factors include a common theme. The Acolyte simply costs far, far too much. And that investment wasn't met with huge viewership numbers like The Mandalorian or critical acclaim like Andor. I honestly don't understand uh, when it comes to Disney, the cost of some of this stuff. I mean, every single thing they do is near or over $200 million. And this is one of the reasons as to, I mean, if you want to point to one of the reasons this show is not being renewed was the fact that this show costs more than many feature films. I mean, that's got to bring in a lot of Disney plus subscriptions to make any of this makes sense and obviously that didn't happen and they go on about the chart this is a really interesting table because it shows us a lot of important details about each of these series successes or lack thereof the acolyte is the second most expensive show on the list at 180 million dollars after andor 250 million but that's only the total spent if you look at the cost per minute footage the acolyte cost a whopping 671,641 dollars per minute to produce and or cost $529,661, about $150,000 less per minute, thanks to its longer meteor episodes and 12-episode count. No other Star Wars show received a 12-episode season, and very few episodes across all Star Wars were as long. As you can see in the chart, Andor runs two and a half hours longer than Ahsoka and is not much shorter than the first two seasons of The Mandalorian combined. And at least with Andor, you can tell where the money went. And I will say, I didn't watch Andor. I, I started, I didn't finish it, but talking with people, a lot of people did like Andor. So I do think it had much more critical acclaim, even though I don't think a lot of the, the fan base really was asking for the show, but from things I heard, it was well done in their defense. The Acolyte cost far more and performed far worse than any other Disney plus Star Wars series. And this is why it was canceled. If it had been hugely popular with viewership numbers closer to the Mandalorian than to Andor, it almost certainly would have been renewed. It's very common sense. And it, trust me, Lucasfilm wanted this show to do well. They didn't put $180 million behind it. They didn't do all the press they did about it. They didn't make Leslie Headland the head of it and then showcase her like everything. They wanted this show to be successful. If it was even borderline successful, they would have gone with the season two. But the fact that they're not, they confirmed. I mean, Lucasfilm normally doesn't confirm when things aren't going to happen. I mean, they, they're still technically saying that the Ryan Johnson trilogy is still in the works, even though he's moved on to making all these movies for Netflix and nobody's asking for a Ryan Johnson trilogy. And they even announced a new trilogy involving Ray. So 
it's but they rarely confirm these things. The fact that they did, you know, shows you quite a bit. But the critical reception was lukewarm and fan reception was largely very negative and viewers didn't show up to watch it. I don't believe this was due to the show's diversity or new setting in the High Republic, but rather to the overall sense that the show was poorly executed with a gimmicky twin storyline that never worked. Some truly abysmal moments like the witch chance and its biggest star killed off in the first five minutes. That doesn't help. That is very true. I do think the Acolyte had potential and perhaps its second season would have realized that potential, but I remain baffled at Disney placing this much trust and this kind of budget in the hands of someone with very little experience. Yet again, the decision making from Lucasfilm makes no sense. It reminds me of the train wreck that is Amazon's Rings of Power, also a series with a huge budget and showrunners that have very little experience. Very true. Disney does need to try new things and Star Wars does need to continue to be diverse. Andor is a great example of a very diverse Star Wars show that worked remarkably well, but the company also needs to be smart and judicious about who it puts in charge of projects. I'll discuss this more in a future post, but the main problem with Star Wars since Lucasfilm joined Disney is a lack of clear vision or strategy for the franchise. That's been obvious since the frustrating sequel trilogy and continues to haunt all things Star Wars to this day. I would say the problem with Lucasfilm is Kathleen Kennedy. I mean, you can say they've been unfocused but that's when kathleen kennedy took over and it's been slowly but surely run into the ground where basically i think most star wars fans are in the apathy stage now and when it comes to diversity if that's the foremost thing that you're focusing on this is also the problem if you're telling a good story if you're bringing people along and getting them just enthralled in your story and you also have diversity people aren't going to care but when you make that the focal point about this and then any complaints about the show you call these fans toxic and bad and racist and all these other things they're just pointing out that the show is not good it's not the fact that the diversity or inclusion of certain people it's simply the fact that the show's not good and i think that this is an argument that a lot of people especially lucasfilm with the star wars fan base is really tired of seeing and hearing is because if you don't like something, then you're just an istist and a phobe. And I think that's what a lot of this frustration comes down to. And I think the one of the reasons why you saw such a backlash to the Acolyte. And it's just really simple. Give us good stories. Make people care about characters. Go back to doing things that Lucasfilm used to do. You know, when George ran it. And George wasn't perfect by any means. But at the very least, George was also trying to tell a story in a universe he created. And it seemed like Lucasfilm, since Kathleen Kennedy has taken over, is trying to tell stories to destroy the world in which George built. And I think with Lucasfilm, they've gone to war with the Star Wars audience for so long now that you're now seeing the, the remnants of that, where the Star Wars fan base, for a lot of them, are just completely apathetic to it now and watching it just to see how bad this is. Because Lucasfilm has proved over the years they didn't want the existing audience. They wanted a new and different audience that they thought was much bigger. And I think the Acolyte actually proves that the audience that was specifically wanting these very niche things involved in a storyline because this is all they cared about, that group of people is not that big. Most people that want good Star Wars just want stories about Star Wars. I think it's easy to point to Kathleen Kennedy on this, but at this point now, it's all of Lucasfilm. And I would like to say that they're going to learn some sort of lesson from this. But I will be surprised that they do. At this stage of the game, the best thing you could do for Star Wars would to be stop making Star Wars for probably at least a decade and then let it get revamped and relaunched under the guidance of people who love and really truly appreciate Star Wars and are dedicated to telling the stories that honor you know, George Lucas and the stuff that he had done and not what current day Lucasfilm has been doing. But in terms of this article, I agree. It's pretty obvious why the, uh, the Acolyte was canceled and it wasn't the dude bros. It was simply the fact that not enough people watched it. It didn't make money, but that's going to do it for this video. If you like this video, please like it and subscribe to the channel as we do lots of content here of theme parks and pop culture news. And let us know in the comments, did you like the Acolyte and are you surprised that it didn't get a season two? And until next time, we will see you later.